Hello, and welcome to the What's New in Fusion 360 for design and engineering video for the May 2022 release. We have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about this time out as this update makes improvements to nearly every single workspace. Without further ado, let's jump on in. If you're not getting notified of our uploads, you're really missing out. We have new content coming online all the time and it's amazing stuff. Be sure to like and subscribe to keep on getting the latest from us. To start us out this time around, check out the new changes in the design environment. A couple of things are worth noting. First off, the replace component command has been enhanced to now support pattern components. If you're making swap outs for fasteners, for example, you only need to pick a single instance in that entire pattern. Second, a new shortcut for the mesh face group visibility is in place. By pressing shift F on the keyboard, you can rapidly toggle the face group visibility on and off. This is pretty useful if you can't exactly tell what face group and individual facet should belong to while you're direct editing. I use this to get a different visual or color perspective to help out. If you're using the product design extension, and you should be, you'll find some enhancements to the boss and snap fit tools. Now, ribs can be added to bosses created with the plastics tools with a newly added tab in the dialog box. Snap fits have improved visuals, selection tools, and some fillet controls for hook roots. Also in the product design extension, you'll see some new in viewport manipulators for the volumetric lattice preview that are definitely worth checking out. We also have five new entries to mention in the materials database. You will now find two new Formlabs materials and three new EOS materials. You can use these materials in the design environment, simulation studies, and generative design. While 3D printed parts are inherently anisotropic, the material data has been gathered via physical testing and represents the lowest observed strength in a variety of print orientations. Use these materials with confidence. We recently added the new tangent relationship in the design environment for bodies and components. For this release, we've enabled API support for that tangent relationship. So get out there and build some slick add-ins. Switching to the drawings environment, we have several new features to talk about. First up, we have the ability to insert model properties into a title block and a parts list table. That means that metadata like material and mass can be brought across automatically using the tag item in the title block editor or enabling that field in the parts list table editor. Next, we've added arc length and radial jog dimensions. Both of these dimension types are accessible in the dimension menu. You'll notice on the jog that the command prompts you for a new center point override. This is really useful when a center point of a curved surface may be well off the page. Another big feature in the drawings environment is the addition of auxiliary views. Now, a design with features that may be at an odd angle can be better seen with an auxiliary view. Previously, this had to be accomplished with various workarounds like named views and separate sheets, but now the view can coexist with a base view on a single sheet. You'll notice that the view creation is based on an edge in the model. Once that edge establishes a direction, then the four projected views from that edge are available to choose from. Let's switch it up and take a look at simulation and generative. For simulation, there's quite a few changes. The first change we come across is in the study selection screen. The mechanical event simulation type has now been split into two different types of solve. The first type is quasi-static. Think of this simulation type as having a very slow application of force. This might be something like a clamp applying pressure or the bending of a fishing rod. The second type of study is the dynamic event simulation. In the dynamic event, we expect to see short duration events like those seen in ballistic impacts or drop tests. As an enhancement to many simulation and generative workflows, we now have included the reaction and contact forces in study results. This makes developing components in an assembly much simpler because the forces imparted onto the assembly components themselves can be identified and quantified. Injection molding has received some bug fixes, as well as a meshing improvement that should help with models that may have been troublesome in the past. Generative design has some new enhancements in the performance of the pre-check system, as well as some expanded documentation that can be found on the Learn More hyperlink in the study selection dialog. Lastly, for generative, we've enabled a new preview solver. If you have alternative outcomes enabled, and you should, you will see a new solver type produce results. As with other solvers, not all combinations of manufacturing method and boundary condition will produce a result, but this new solver is definitely worth checking out in your generative workflow. That's all we've got on the design and engineering side this release. 
As always, check out the What's New blog for the complete rundown, and be sure to catch the What's New for manufacturing and electronics as well. Again, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more Fusion 360 goodness, and we'll see you on the next release.